Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our virtual classroom. And today we are going to be doing our third part of our um, semester exam review. Uh, and so for the other two parts, uh, if you can look at your Monday folder on Schoology. Um, otherwise, let's go on ahead with this. All right, I wanted to cover uh, some of the numbers that I felt were more, not necessarily challenging, but definitely maybe some that cover material that you're less familiar with because we haven't really covered this thoroughly. So let's begin with number four. Number four, which is saying, which uh, relationship which relationship is represented in the following graph? Anytime you're given a graph, ladies and gentlemen, uh, realize that we are talking about a relationship between two different variables. And anytime we have a relationship, it's always between two different things, right? Um, and, and so in this case, we see a relationship between our X or independent variable, which is the amount of time and our y or dependent variable, which is the cost uh, dollars for renting a sur uh, surfboard. In other words, the amount, the cost of the surfboard will depend on, so the dependent variable, that the cost will depend on the amount of time that you have it uh, or that you rent it for. Uh, and so the way that you see this in the graph is that for one hour we get, it costs about seven something, it's not very clear. But for two hours, it's clearly $15. For three, it's somewhere between 20 and 25, but for four, it's clearly 30. Uh, the best way to interpret a graph, ladies and gentlemen, is to um, is to make a table, okay? Where I'm gonna have my X variable, my independent variable on here on this left side, which is really time in hours. And I'm gonna have my Y variable over here, and that's gonna be the, uh, the cost. And let's just use this graph to fill out this table. Really, there's no real thinking involved here yet. Uh, we're just copying things down, right? So for example, when my time is one hour, what was the cost? When it was two hours, what was the cost? When it was three hours, what was the cost? When it was four hours, what was the cost? What I mean by that is whenever it's one hour, well, what is the cost? It's not very clear, so I'm gonna skip that one for now. For two hours though, the cost was $15. For three hours, again, not very clear, but for four, it's clearly 30. So ladies and gentlemen, let's see, what is the relationship? What is happening between X and Y? What do I have to do to my X to get to the Y? All right. Uh, and so in this case, well, you can ask yourself, uh, what are we doing to the two to get to 15? So obviously I could add 13, right? Because two plus 13 equals 15. However, is that really the relationship that's happening between the time that we have the surfboard and the cost? If it is, then that should work for all of them. Uh, for this one, that means that four plus 13 should give you 30. And obviously that's not true. Well, that works for two, two plus 13 does give me 15. Four plus 13 obviously doesn't give me 30. So it's not an addition relationship. Uh, well, what if we multiply? Two, two times what gives me 15? Let's, let's try that out. So two times what number is gonna give me 15? Uh, from what we know in solving equations or just looking at this, we know that the opposite of multiplication is division. So 15 divided by two will give me my variable. So that number has to be 15 divided by two is 7.5. So another way to get to 15 is to multiply two by 7.5. And let's ask ourselves, does that work for four? So it obviously works for two. Two times 7.5 is 15. But let's see if it works for these other ones. Well, four times 7.5, if you work that out, you will find that that indeed gives you 30. So it seems to me, ladies and gentlemen, that if I multiply the time by 7.5, it doesn't matter what time it was, if it was two hours, three hours, four hours, it should give you the cost for having that surfboard. Let's see if that works. If the time is one, was it 7.5? Actually, that is 7.5. We can see that it's right here between five and 10. Two times 7.5, we already saw that that is 15, that works. 
3 times 7.5, that is actually 22.5. And that is, so for 3, that is 22.5. It is between 20 and 25. That makes sense. And for 4, again, that is 30. So the relationship, guys, is that for every hour, it seems to be increasing by 7.5. It's increasing by 7.5. $7.50 extra for each hour. Each hour is exactly 7.5 more. So let's see which of these makes sense. Firstly, the shop, uh, A, it says the shop charges more per hour later in the day. In other words, it's charging more and more and more. But from here, we see that it's not. It's always charging the exact same amount each hour. It's seven and a half each hour. That is clearly evident, even just by looking at the graph. Notice how it makes a very, a perfectly straight line. If they were charging more per hour, at some point it would just go higher and higher and higher if they were charging more and more. It wouldn't be a perfectly straight line, but in this case it is. So I know that they're not charging more each hour. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that one's clearly wrong. Let's look at B. The shop rents 15 surfboards for two hours. Now, some of you guys will be tempted to look at the two and be like, two, it's 15. Hey, that looks like it works. However, notice the variables. We have two hours, so that works, but $15, not surfboards. And if you really think about it, that doesn't make any sense. In two hours, they're going to give you 15, 15 surfboards. No, it does not make any sense. We're not using the same variables. Letter C has the same problem. The shop charges $7.50, okay? for one surfboard. Now it's supposed to be for one hour, not for one surfboard. So again, two different variables. That is not what we're talking about. So the answer should be D. The shop charges 750 per hour. So one hour, 750. Two hours, another 750. Ladies and gentlemen, D is the answer. Uh, I encourage you to pause this and go back and, and review what I did to see how it is that we saw the relationship between X the time, and why the cost. Let's do another one. And let's see if this one's a little bit easier. Um, let's see here. The table shows the relationship between T and P. I don't know why it says O. Oh, it's supposed to say T and P. All right. Uh, notice that they don't give us a graph, but we can. I'm going to rewrite this table um, so that it's a little bit easier to see what is going on here. So we have T and we have P. And I'm going to assume that T is my independent variable. That's what comes first. And P is my dependent variable, my Y, X followed by Y. Um, so we have to do something to T to get to P. All right, and my T values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and five, and let's just line up. So whenever T is zero, P is zero. I'm just recopying this down, guys. There's nothing really to it. For one, it's one tenth. Oh no, we have fractions. For two is one fifth. For three, it's three tenths. For four, it's two fifths. And for five, it's one half. So at this point, I haven't done any real thinking. I just copied down this table but over here. And we have to ask ourselves, again, what is the relationship? Okay, what is the relationship? How do I get from T to P? Well, it's kind of hard to tell because uh, while I have fractions, um, they have a different denominator. Uh, and it's hard to compare fractions when they have different denominators. So let's change these fractions so that they do have a common denominator. And I can see that um, they could all be converted to fractions over 10. So obviously, uh, one tenth stays as one tenth, so that's fine. But um, one fifth, I would have to multiply the five by two and multiply the one by the same factor to get uh, two tenths. Okay, I think I see a pattern here because we have one tenth for one, two tenths for two, uh, three tenths for three. I bet you this next one's going to be four tenths because I have to multiply the five uh, again by two. And two times two is four. So again, we go up by another tenth. 
And one half, uh, yes, I would have to multiply the two by five to make it a 10, multiply the one by five. So that gives me um, five tenths. Um, I encourage you to pause it at any point and go back to see how it is. All I did is I converted these fractions into equivalent fractions, but they all have the same denominator now, and I can easily see the pattern. Each time I'm going up by one tenth. One tenth plus one tenth is two tenths. Two tenths plus another tenth is three tenths. Three tenths plus another tenth is four tenths. Four tenths plus another tenth is five tenths. So each time I'm going up by one tenth. One tenth. I'm doing one tenth over and over and over again, multiple times. Anytime I am adding the same thing over and over and over again, guys, I'm simply multiplying by that number. In the same way, in the previous example, I was each time I was adding 750, 750 to the surfboard cost per hour. Now I'm adding one tenth each time. So let's multiply. Let's go ahead and multiply by one tenth. That's what's happening. One times one tenth is one tenth, obviously. Two times one tenth, again, I'm doing one tenth over and over again, but now it's twice. Uh, and two times one is two, 10 times one is 10. That gives me two tenths. It checks out. Three times one tenth. Three times one is three, 10 times one is 10. It works out. Remember that these are always over one. Uh, four times one tenth. Again, that gives me four tenths. Ten, five times one tenth, that gives me five tenths. So ladies and gentlemen, in order to get to P, it seems that I just have to take my T value and multiply that times one tenth or one tenth times T. Therefore, obviously my answer is A. Again, I, I just had to change my fractions to look the same and I was able to see that I'm simply increasing it every time by one tenth over and over again. You multiply by one tenth. Let's do an easy one. Let's do an easier one uh, that you'll find in number 13. Number 13, notice how they already gave you a table and they want to know the relationship, the relationship, so there's two variables between time worked and amount charged. So here's the time worked, that is my X variable, and amount charged, that is my Y variable. So what do I have to do to X to get to Y? And looking at this, uh, to get, let's just try the first one, to get from two to 80, um, because they're not going by one, so it's kind of hard to tell what it's increasing by um, because we just want to see the very next one. But to get to two to 80, we could add 78, right? because two plus 78 is 80. But clearly this is not an additive relationship. We're not adding because four times 78, if I try to do the same thing, it doesn't give me 160. It has to work every single time. All right, well, what if we multiply, let's try multiplication, two times something to give us 80. Well, two times 40 is 80. Let's see if that works over here. Times 40 is four times 40. That gives us 160, that works. Six times 40, that is 240. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we found our relationship. It is a multiplication relationship. To get from one variable to the other, I do have to multiply it by 40. So let's see which of these makes sense. The table shows an additive relationship. No, we just said it was a multiplication relationship. I don't even have to read the rest. I already know that's wrong. B, the table shows an additive relationship. Again, no, it doesn't. It's a multiplication relationship. Anytime you're talking about a relationship, it is from one variable to a different variable. No, it is not an additive relationship. C, the table shows a multiplicative relationship. It does. All right. The amount worked, the amount of time worked, so that would be my X, okay, is uh, 40, that's why I'm just reading it, 40 times the amount charged. The amount charged was my Y. So in order to get to X, I do 40 times the Y. So in other words, I'm gonna multiply this by 40 to get to X, that doesn't seem right. Even though it is describing a multiplication relationship, it uh, doesn't seem right. Let's try the next one. Um, the table shows a multiplicative relationship, it does, where the amount charged, amount charged, so that is Y, is, this is my is, 40, times the amount of time worked, which we labeled that X. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we did here. 
We took my x, for example, 2. We multiply by 40, and that gave me my y value. The answer is d. So as you can see, guys, when you have tables, um, don't let that freak you out, OK? Just ask yourself, how do you get from one to the other? Am I having to add each time by a certain number? Am I having to multiply by a certain number? Uh, and does that make sense? Notice how if I were to put uh, the value for 3, 3 times 40 is 120. Notice how we're each time from 2 to 3, we're increasing it by 40. 80 to 120 is 40. From 120 to 60, again, it's 40. The next one for 5 would be 200 because 5 times 40 is 200. 160 to 200, again, would be 40. From 200 to 240, again, it's 40. So I'm consistently increasing by 40. I'm increasing by 40. I'm multiplying by 40. It's a multiplication relationship. Uh, I hope you found that helpful, ladies and gentlemen, with these uh, three problems, all of them having to do with tables. Now, the only the problem I wanted to do was number seven. And if we can just do number seven really quick. Um, where is it? Here it is. It says a factory, pro a factory, a factory produces 124 chocolate bars per hour. So 124, 124 bars per hour. In other words, in one hour, they produce 124 bars. Okay, that's, that seems like a rate, 124 in one hour. Uh, it's not going to change. What seems to change is the hour. They need to produce more than, that's an inequality, more than 310 at this same rate. In other words, uh, they're doing 124, and we want to see, uh, okay, well, let's keep reading. Which inequality represents all the values for H, the number of hours the factory must operate to produce more than 310 chocolate bars? In other words, if I'm doing 124 chocolate bars each hour, how many hours do I need to operate for us to have more than 310 chocolate bars? That is exactly what it's saying right there. All right, well, let's work this out. Um, so the opposite of multiplying, if I want to isolate the variable, remember, whenever I'm solving inequalities or equations, my goal is always the same, and that is to isolate the variable. In this case, I want to isolate the h. The opposite of multiplying by 124 is to divide by 124. So h is now isolated, but whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I need to divide 310 by 124. So h has to be greater than whatever 310 divided by 124 is. Let's go ahead and work that out. Um, 124 goes into 310 twice. That will be 248. We subtract these. I have to borrow from the tens. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. I have to borrow from the hundreds. 10 minus 4 is 6. I have a remainder of 62. So I have to put a, there's nothing left. So I have to put a decimal, bring down the 0. And 124 goes into 620 exactly five times. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems to me uh, like, not seems to me, we have to do work for more than two and a half hours, 2.5, to get more than 310. So the answer is clearly C. If, they, if the factory works exactly for two and a half hours, you're going to create 210 chocolate bars. So we need to do more than that to have more than 310, more than two and a half hours. Uh, the hardest part in this one was creating the inequality. But I, just make sure you pay attention to key words. More than 310, 124 bars per hour. So obviously, 124 in one hour, two hours, three hours, and a certain amount of hours to get to 310. Uh, remember to isolate the variable. We're always going to use the opposite operation. And then whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this review useful. And um, hopefully, it helps you study um, not only for the exam, but also uh, to just um, be check your, your, your ability with the things that we've been doing so far this semester. Uh, with that in mind, I will see you uh, next time.